uh, Megan here. If you are new, this is Teaching in the Pines. I am a second year fourth grade teacher in Northern California. All right, this is classroom setup day five. Let's just jump right into this. You will notice that yes, this is a classroom setup video, but no, I'm not in my classroom today. It is Tuesday, July 6th. Wow. I am on a teacher summer vacation in its finest. I am in my pajamas. I am in my living room. I am sipping on some coffee this morning and I am just relaxing and being Megan. I'm not being a teacher right now. However, I was editing my videos for classroom setup day five and I was realizing that I just wasn't happy with what I was pushing out. So um, I wanna be real with you guys. I want to be as transparent as possible. So I'm still gonna show you what I have in just a second, but I wanted to kind of chat with you about it. I just, I just went right to work after summer school. It was the last day and I was just getting things done. So I didn't film introduction video segment for Classroom Day 5 and I didn't close out my video. I was just not in a good mood and I want to be transparent with you guys because I think that on here it's really easy to put on this super happy, brave, lucky, happy-go-lucky face. That's not always the case and I want to kind of explain to you what happened because I always want to be open and honest in who I am on here. I don't ever want to come off as somebody who is fake or not a real person. Anyways, I had kind of an off day last Friday. Last Friday was my last day that I took time to set up my classroom. I started to set up this bulletin board and it did not go as planned. And you guys are gonna be like, well, that doesn't really make sense, it looks fine. Maybe you will kind of agree with me, but it just wasn't what I wanted and I got a little bit frustrated. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna show you the footage that I have for day five and then I will come back and explain to you why I'm being grumpy about it. <laughs> okay, so here's that footage. All right, this is job number one to put everything away. I had some epiphanies last night. I stayed up late i um, just kind of watching Netflix and I was kind of thinking what I could do with some of this stuff. So I have some ideas, but I really just need to condense it and put things back where they go. Some, a lot of them are, um, like a lot of it is decor and stuff that I'm taking home. So it's not that bad. All right. These are my beloved tables. They are a little bit taller than I remember. That is okay because it adds some variety to seating. The kids actually liked that was taller and they could actually stand back here and do it. I'm planning, um before we come back to school to find some stools. I'm hoping that the five below near me gets more stools in stock. They're completely out right now, but that is the goal. If not, then I think I'll just go to Ikea and get some stools or we'll see what happens. This area is turning out exactly how I like it. Um, all my filing boxes, sorry, this table's in the way, are perfect. The only thing that I need to do are I need to label these two filing boxes. This one is empty, this was math after we get through all of our units. This was my math um, tub that is all of our units and what we do throughout the year. And this is like after state testing, PBL projects, and um, just like extra math resources. I even have fact fluency in there. This one is empty and I really don't know what to do with it. I am kind of running out of ideas. So we'll just keep it just in case because I know that I'm gonna be acquiring new papers from here on out. I think what I'm gonna decide to do actually so I'm gonna move these back on that counter over there. I think what I've decided is that I'm gonna use those as early finishers. I'm gonna have maybe one for math and one for language arts. So when we finish our language arts, they can do an early finisher. When they finish our math independent work, they can do a math early finisher. So I think I'm gonna put that back there. Um, I can't, I don't really have a purpose for it back here, but I knew that I wanted some sort of drawer system. The other thing that I'm thinking is, let me take you over there. I have these bins right here and I love the system. I used this last year and I wasn't gonna change it, but I'm gonna take these bins and I'm going to put them back in that small group area just because if I'm grading or working on something, it is an area that I can just quickly grab when I need to. I might leave the responsibility tray back here because I'm turning this little area into like 
a mini student center. I don't know what else to call it. I'm going to put the classroom mailboxes back there. Um, and I'm also going to put the early finishers back there. So this is all the stuff or like all, this is an area where they have all the things that they possibly need to grab. Um, I think that's going to work out really well and I'm pretty excited about it. Let's talk about these cabinets. Uh, here's what we're thinking. I think that I want to put my birthdays up here along this beautiful um, top cabinet. And I truly don't know what I'm going to do with this big cabinet. Last year, I had, I do classroom cash. Um, I do classroom economy for my behavior system. And I had this side as my classroom economy, like what to buy as far as like stores and rewards that they could buy. I'm probably going to keep that. It worked out really well and I really liked it. I do not have anything, an idea for this one. Maybe I'll just make it one big thing, but that's what we're doing so far. did it I did the biggest task on my list I'm super excited that is done um I can't decide if I want that table or not I kind of don't but I don't really know where to put it because I have too much furniture in here um my room is kind of a disaster that's okay I have a system my desk is looking much better I might even get rid of this bookshelf I kind of can't decide um, this is falling apart. I really need to bring in a screwdriver and fix it along with my other one because it's just, it's kind of like separating out so they're not fitting in there. I have to go through this, um, but I'm going to leave it for now. There really isn't much else I want to do in this corner. I can't really decide what I want. I kind of, right now when I'm thinking about it. Oh, okay. I just want to put that in there. I don't really access that a lot. I mean, yeah, I think I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it how it is. I might move that filing cabinet, though. Um, like, just pivot it so it's, it pulls out this way. That's how I had it last time. Or I might put it back, like, along the desk right there. Um, it's going good over here. I'm going to put up that anchor chart. I'm going to take that down. I cleared off my whiteboard so that they could clean it and oil it and do all the things that they need to. So I need to figure out where I'm going to put that sign. I don't want it there. This area is a hot mess, but it's an organized hot mess. Um, so I moved everything I want over here in my little small group area. Um, my rocking chair is going to stay here. I don't really foresee it being a problem with it being there. This was something I used last year that I loved. I kept band-aids in the top. Oh, I lied. These are called emoji partners. The kids absolutely love these. I just printed some emojis on some white paper and they have to find the match. Um, so like there's two of them. They get excited whatever emoji they pick out or they, they it's random. Whatever they get, they get really excited about it. And it's a good way to randomize students in a fun, creative way. So that's another thing. Um, I do class economy. This is my class cash. I made it. Um, yeah, I do like ones and fives in here for like, if no one's participating, then I'll just throw out a one or maybe a five if really no one's participating. Um, I kept band-aids in here. That was what it was. I just kept some random things, but I let the kids access it sometimes for band-aids. So I'm going to put it probably somewhere on this table where they can just really quickly grab it or maybe back there. Over here is my 20 book challenge materials um each kid gets a shower ring so I have a bunch of a bunch of extra shower rings um 
And then whenever they read a book, they get a bead to choose from. Um, these are my Glad sticks. I kind of did something differently this year. So I had the spoons for Glad, but it's really just colors and numbers. So I painted um, each stick a different color. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. This one got messed up. Um, you painted each of these a different color. Um, you're supposed to pull, this is a Glad strategy. I don't want to kind of go over it, but you pull a color and a number. I haven't put the numbers on yet. I'm just going to sharpen them, but I'll just keep them in here so I can't see the numbers. And I really got to figure out something else because you can totally see the colors. So I need to find another little cup, but I'm just keeping them over here for now. Um, magnets, morning meeting materials. This is all the stuff on my whiteboard that I kind of had to take off for them. So it's in a bucket for now. These are all my small group supplies I got from the Target dollar spot this year. I'm actually so excited. Um, sometimes we read with the lights off, but some kids, only a couple are complaining that they can't see. So it's super light. I mean, how could it be that dark with these? So <laughs> they are fine. And I got these super cute little lights from the Target dollar spot. It was a perfect solution. They're donuts and basketballs. So they just turn on. I haven't tested one out yet. Hold on. I'm obsessed. Like it's going to be the perfect little book light and they're so cute. You just clip it onto a book and I think they're going to really like them. So, um, it's more of a flexible seating thing because I, whenever I let my kids read here, I say that they can sit anywhere they want on the floor, literally standing up. I don't care where it is. They just have to be a certain amount of distance away from them. I say six feet. Um, it was really easy to do that with COVID last year. I got, these. I felt like it'd be kind of fun to do with math small group. And then I got these little guys for reading small groups. Um, I've heard lots of cool things. I'm really excited. I got a pack. Um, oh, I should move these. I got a couple of these because I do the 40 book challenge every year. This year it was the 20 book challenge. Well, every year I did it last year. Um, but I'm planning to because it was a hit. I know this is 30, but that's most of them. And they could use that as a bookmark. Um, and they could just get a second one when they finish. And they just have two to complete the 40 book challenge. So I'll put it in my 40 book challenge there. So I thought that was kind of fun way for them to keep track. And that's pretty much it. I use these magazine holders for small group. I need to make new labels for them depending on who my groups are. I still haven't moved those drawers. Everything there is kind of how it was. I moved most of my books that I'm using for a small group and teacher workspace over here that I'm going to put in this little um, rack. But look, you guys, I'm sitting, actually I'm standing in my small group area and look how nice the view is. I can see everything. I just, oh my gosh, this is it. I found it, my perfect little spot in the classroom. All right, so I'm going to kind of compartmentalize this work area and I'll pick you back up. All right, guys, this is what I have gotten done so far back here. It really wasn't much. I just moved their mailboxes here so when they line up, they can just grab it and get in line right here. It's kind of our system. I really didn't move it very far, but I already like it better that it's their area to get their stuff and to be responsible and to be proactive um, is back here. I have a stapler and tape back here that I keep back for them. Um, what else? That responsibility trays back here. I have my early finishers for math, early finishers for language arts. Yeah. I love how it's looking back here. And I, I'm obsessed with this corner. I think what I'm going to change is I'm changing the microscopes up 
on this side. So if there are kids here that are kicking, it wouldn't, it, they wouldn't kick the microscopes. They'd kick those tubs, which is fine. Kind of already showed you this yesterday, but I got more of my books back. I filled my dog man book up. Um, I kept this dictionary out that they referred to a lot. So I just kind of put it back here. These read letters, I'm still not sure what to do with them. I kind of need this whiteboard or this bulletin board for something, but I don't know. We'll see. I kind of moved some plants back here, that sign. It's just looking really cozy. I'm just really, I'm just kind of playing with things as far as decor and like what I want featured back in this little nook, but I actually really like it. I didn't think I would like it this much, but I do. If you hate it, <laughs> please lie. This is as much as I'm gonna do back here. Um, I kind of cleaned everything off. Everything that I don't really want getting broken, I put inside my desk and that's gonna be a task for start of the year. Um, reorganize those books. I cleared off this bottom shelf that I, I'm sure can use for something else. That I need to figure out, that black little thing. This is completely cleared off. This is my last task and then I'm going home. These are all the things that I made with my Cricut that need to get put up somewhere. I'm not gonna put up everything, but I'm going to try to get a head start on it. Um, I don't know if I have enough of this. I'm gonna try to make a short, I mean like a, yeah, short but long bulletin board where I have talked about down here. I need to put that cubes board away. So this is like my system. I need to put these in here, but these are like little palm, palm flowers that hang from the ceiling. I'm just gonna keep them ready to go. These two bins are kind of really for the beginning of the year projects, like my lights. Um, I'm gonna use these clips for something, some decor that I'm not really sure I wanna put somewhere, but they're kind of sentimental. My like, kids gave them to me. Everything else, I'm gonna try and find a place for today. That's my last step and I am going home. Let me show you what else is going on here. This is my like flexible seating area. I have 32 bins and it fits perfectly eight to a shelf. Looks awesome. Those are my flexible seating options. We'll talk about those in the beginning of the year. Same with that white crate. It has like little floor pads. They're really squishy. Um, I moved my math games into a gray bin just because I never really fit in the white one. It looks good in the white one, but I like that it's more compact and it's concealed a little bit better. Then the other one are clipboards. I didn't do much over here. I just kind of put more of my math, math manipulatives away, which you probably saw me do that were in like this giant crate like that. I got rid of that crate and I just put my privacy screens down there as well as um, more of my science and social studies manipulatives because I needed space for those. I condensed my toys in these bins. I moved the block manipulatives over here. I don't really care if they play with them. It's a spelling game or a math game, kind of depending on what they want to do with it. These are like rainy day recess games or free choice. And you've seen this beautiful little corner that I am absolutely obsessed and in love with. Okay, now I'm gonna get working on this. I'm gonna try to put up that last bulletin board and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, this is not what I had in mind. I wanted it to go all the way down, but that, that's the only um, border paper that I had left and I made it work. I'll just do like a small little strip. I might do my attention getters or my hand signals down there. Um, but now I'm gonna start putting things on bulletin boards. And I think I'm gonna put some math lingo down here, if that makes sense. I have these, oops well okay i have these um cards that have like this is subtraction and it has words that go along with subtraction decrease loss minus and they are in the shape of whatever it is like subtraction is a 
line multiplication is across or like an X, um, if that makes sense. I forgot where I got them from. I will let you know as soon as I find that out, but I think that's the perfect place to put it. So I'm going to set you down and I'm going to figure out how they go together. And yeah, I'm gonna put you down. All right, so by now you have seen Classroom Setup Day 5. That is the best I can offer you. So I wanted to spend more time doing things than I really did, but it was the last day of school. You guys, last day of school, summer school edition. You guys know how a typical last day of school goes. It's very high energy. So it was, it was really draining and we had a field day. Now, we were on the field playing water games and obstacle courses, but the teachers weren't the ones who were getting wet. It was the students, and that was kind of like the whole point of it. But that being said, it was very hot. I don't want to take away from the fact that that was a really fun day. But being out in the heat for that amount of time, not really drinking enough water, working, and spending that much time underneath the sun this time of year, took a lot out of me. I was very tired and I needed a nap <laughs> right after. And I didn't really take a break. I just went straight from field day, end of school day, to setting up my classroom. And that being said, going straight from field day slash the end of school to setting up my room might not have been the best idea. I should have taken a little bit more of a break because I became a little bit grumpy and my work kind of suffered because of it. One of the things that I was unhappy with was the was the bulletin board underneath my whiteboard. I wanted that to go the full length of my whiteboard underneath and it's not even close to how I wanted it. I had several things planned for it. I wanted to put up hand signals and my attention getter slash release calls, callbacks and all that stuff. Um, don't know if that's making sense and I can kind of explain it when I go to put them up. but. I had things that I had had my heart set on being there and it wasn't gonna fit with what I had pushed out. I decided to go ahead and put the bulletin board up even though I knew I didn't have enough paper to make that work. And I didn't wanna spend any more money buying more paper. I was being very strict with my budget because I, I had already spent a certain amount of my budget and I didn't want to spend any more until the school year is getting closer. Um, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious with my money because last year I just kind of spent, 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 spent because first year teacher I feel like you're kind of made to feel like you need to and I really shouldn't have but I did and so this year I was very like I'm not going to spend more than x y and z amount and I've been really good about that but I didn't want to buy another set of bulletin board paper because of that reason um so I just decided to just make it work and do what I needed to do so I made the bulletin board and it turned out crooked and I thought I could fix it with the burlap and it just didn't work and then I moved on to the mass signal words and I knew they were bright I knew they were kind of neon and I thought that it wouldn't look as bad when I put it up I thought it would add some color to my calm green white and brown room that I had worked really hard on because I had made everything super neutral and I was like why can't I just add some color but it ended up being so bright that when you looked at it when you first walked in the room that's the first thing your eyes drawn to and it wasn't necessarily what I wanted my eyes to be drawn to and I was just putting these things up and both of them kind of failed in my mind and I knew that I'm going to have to take both of those things down because I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand the way the signal words turned out. I couldn't stand the bulletin board and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to redo it, but I don't know what to redo it with. Um, so I just left in a hurry that day because I was just frustrated. I didn't 
film like an end to my vlog. I didn't show you the whole completed like setup. I didn't do anything that I normally would do because I was frustrated. And I had had the last couple days to kind of really step back from it. I've looked at the videos. I've kind of really pondered what I want to do. I've recharged. I went to crumble cookies with my husband, went on a dog, um, dog walk with my fur children. I've spent time rejuvenating myself and I have now decided that I'm going to start over from scratch on that side of the room. I'm taking down that bulletin board paper that didn't work. I'm taking down that bulletin board that didn't work. I'm taking down those signal words. I'm just, I'm restarting it. And I went to Michael's. They had that 30% off coupon over the weekend plus my teacher discount. And I got one roll of bulletin board paper. It's not the paper I wanted. It's not the same color. It's wood. It's the wood shiplap paper that everybody sees. I will link it below if you're um, curious. It's not better than bulletin paper or better than paper bulletin board brand. I don't really know exactly what it is. It's not better than paper, that brand. It's fadeless and I had some of that too and it works pretty well. So, and for how cheap it was and my discounts, it really worked out. So that's what I'm gonna make work. I'm gonna put a one long bulletin board down below and that's what we're gonna do. So it's all gonna be fine. It's all gonna get done in time. I just have to keep reminding myself that. And I'm sorry if this turned into like a poor me situation. My two things that I wanted didn't work out. That's not really what this is right now. I wanted it to be transparent and I think it's important to see like fail, little failures here and there because I model that for my students. I don't know if you guys do that, but it's okay to make mistakes. And I think that being on here, it, we're very pressured to kind of put out the pretty final product and we're not encouraged enough to put out things that don't necessarily work or um, things that we're frustrated by. So I want to be genuine, honest, and open with you and show you the things that happen even when they don't go right. So that being said, next video, I'm going to fix that correction. I'm coming in this weekend, this Friday, not weekend, sorry. I'm going back in this Friday and I'm going to fix those things that were frustrating me now that I have time to relax. So that is my classroom setup day five. I'm going to go ahead and end this vlog. And again, tell you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching these videos, for liking, subscribing, and commenting. It really, truly means a lot to me. Keep doing it. Um, it's really making everything I'm doing feel so much better. I also want to take a really quick second and tell you that I would love to do a Q&A coming up because I feel like I've gotten so many of you in a short amount of time that none of you really know who I am or what I believe in or what I like and what kind of teacher I am. So I know that you're enjoying these classroom setup videos, but I want this channel to be more than just classroom setup videos. I want to expand and help you guys out with tips and tricks and anything I can. So please, down in the comments, leave me a question that you want me to answer on here. I would love to do a Q&A coming up. So leave me a comment, tell me what you want to know about me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.